have two prominent people in our industry present. We have uh, Dr. John McKeon, who's the CEO of Allergy Standards. If you don't know, Train has invested with Allergy Standards and the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. We have the first whole house filtration solution that is certified by the Asthma and Allergy Foundation. It filters dust down to 0.1 microns. And also with us, Matt Reisinger of Reisinger Build, probably one of the best known influencers in the builder community, has been building healthy homes for a long time now being an advocate of helping us build more healthier homes, helping us find a way to do it at less cost, scale it across the industry so we can support, uh, support our overall sustainability goals. They're gonna have a little chat, they each have some slides, and then hopefully we'll have some time for Q&A at the end. So with that, I'll hand it off to Steve. Dr. John. Great, thanks very much, Dave. I appreciate the opportunity. Maybe if, can I ask people just to move in a little bit because the screen we're gonna use is this, this small one here, and I've got some slides. I promise you, as a, uh, I'm a, an ER doctor by training. I also teach in the business school, but there won't be any exam questions or MCQs or anything, you're, you're, you're safe. Okay, so as Dave said, um, out of all this vast, vast um, trade show, uh, there's only a very few companies that actually hold this accolade of this certification from the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. And within this category, Train were the first to do that. So it aligns with some of their really brave sustainability initiatives they took a few years ago and then they brought the conversation past sustainability and chemistry and material science into healthy home and putting the people who live in the homes that we build as, as building professionals at the center of their value proposition. And the way we like to describe the certification program is we make the invisible, like air and these kind of difficult to describe concepts like wellness and healthy home, and we try to make them visible through storytelling and the power of story. So my slides aren't very technical, but what I want to get across is the real human interest and emotional connection to this concept of healthy home. So why is a certification program related to asthma and allergies, why is that relevant to us? Why, why do you as professionals and architects and builders need to get up to speed on this issue? Well, if we start with a couple of numbers, um, 10 people die every day because of asthma in America. Um, it affects about one in two households. Um, if I could have just a quick show of hands, how many people here um, have asthma or have allergies or know somebody in their home who has asthma and allergies? So if you kind of look around, it's normally about 30 to 50% of people that it will actually impact their buying decisions. And it's actually an enormous burden cost to the state and the, part, the, the payers, the providers, the hospitals are interested in people staying more healthy at home rather than rushing into emergency rooms. So this is very much a burden cost and a societal issue as well. Let's just get to grips with my, my uh, clicker here. If you want to put it in, in market size, that's, they, they were the human numbers I gave you. Market size, it's about 43 billion that Americans spend on products targeted at improving indoor air quality, specifically as it relates to asthma and allergies. So that's things like special vacuum cleaners, special types of bedding, cleaning products, how we maintain our buildings and what we put into our buildings. So I just want to bring you on a little journey of what I've seen where the market is going in this issue. I spoke at the both International Living Future Conference as well as the US Green Building Conference this year. And I put some slides together about where I think the key market trends are going forward. So the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals are absolutely key and you'll see them permeating around a number of marketing issues. Specifically, if you look at the ones relevant to this audience, there are about building good dwellings, about health and wellness, about the concept of partnership being the new leadership. And they're all very much themes that relate to the work the train has done with both their innovation, but also their community outreach with the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. And just very briefly, this is uh, one of the largest children's science fairs in Ireland. And my daughter was presenting at it this year. This is Ayla here at the min middle. I said I would uh, show this slide because I was going to build a show because our whole project was about concrete. And you'll see here, here with a piece of concrete and the ingredients for concrete being cement and sand, etc. But you can even see all the kids in the school and all the parents and all the teachers who went to that science fair were all tuned in about the sustainable development goals. So it's very much part of where people's mindset is. And what I'm seeing within the building trade is that in previous years, sustainability and material science was about the people who built the buildings and then you kind of allow the eco people in and the, the green guys just to tick a couple of boxes and get the architects off your back and it was very much a box ticking exercise and where I'm seeing now is that's moving into human health 
and putting people at the center of why we build sustainable and healthy buildings. And that's very much a value proposition rather than just a cost of doing business and a box ticking exercise. Um, the head of marketing for Home Depot spoke at US Green Building and again the themes there were all about better products and a better world through those products and again they're putting the home and healthy home at the center of all their message both in their B2B market but also into their B2C market. Um, they have all their products now water sense and I see water as an issue that was very very key a while ago and that's now going to move into air and air is going to be the next big thing and if you look at um, food and water we don't expect to drink dirty water and we wouldn't eat our food off dirty plates so why do we expect the people that we build those houses for and we spec as architects or builders them to breathe dirty air and I think people are beginning even though it's invisible and it's this, like the story with the goldfish the goldfish is the last person to actually notice he's in water we are now going to see people notice and talk about the air and the air is going to be absolutely crucial in your marketing going forward and interestingly, uh, this is Ron Jarvis, spoke at the podium and a number of the products that he had, the LG laundry machines as well as the um, Owens Corning mineral wool insulation were certified products. So this brand in architects' minds and building specifiers is growing all the time. One of the other big trends, um, and yesterday as you know was Martin Luther King Day, I had a fantastic opportunity to speak with Bernice King at the show to look at the work that we're doing with regards to underserved communities. So we're working at the very top end, building best in class houses, but we're also looking at improving indoor air quality. Um, in underserved communities and that concept of us living in an interrelated world and having equity throughout society and clean air for all I think aligns a lot with um, train sustainability goals and what they're giving back to the community and we now know that people buy products that share their own personal values so if, you, if your corporate social responsibility again is just box ticking I would challenge you to convert it into a value proposition and really connect with your consumers so really as just a summary of it, what we have here is I think basic material science and eco and green is going to be the price of entry moving forward. But the customer needs analysis and the value hierarchy is all going to be about uh, wellness and, and keeping people healthy. Um, Barack Obama spoke at the show um, and even he challenged the architects and the, the building professionals in, in the room to say let's not just talk about material science and outgassing and VOCs, let's talk about putting that all together for wellness and, healthy and, and, and health of the people who live in those in, in environments. But interestingly, he, he's probably the, the most recent president to have said it, but he's not the first president to have said it. Um, Benjamin Franklin, almost 200 years ago, has a lovely quote here that he, he was completely persuaded about the concept of poor indoor air contributing to poor health. So it's something Benjamin Franklin said, and then now here in this booth today with Tranquility and Train, the work they're doing, they're uh, relaunching that message. So this story, we all know, we know we take 20,000 breaths a day, we know we spend 90% of our time indoors, and we know the US EPA says indoor air quality can be up to five times more polluted than outdoor air quality. And we also know that building code is very well developed in B2B and in manufacturing and ASHRAE, but probably could do more within building of homes. And what we're trying to do is actually convert that to a value proposition. Um, so just a very quick story about who I am and what the certification program is. This is me many years ago training as a junior doctor um, in this old hospital in Dublin, a beautiful Georgian street in Dublin, our National Children's Hospital. And when I was there, I was at a very busy outpatient clinic and the physicians and the healthcare professionals were telling the mums of kids with asthma and allergy about avoiding trigger factors. Um, and mums love this concept because they're saying, hey doc, are you saying that if I improve my indoor environment, if I avoid the triggers, if I find out what I'm allergic to, where it is in my home, is it formaldehyde outgassing from furniture, is it mold buildup, is it other impacts of indoor air quality, and I eradicate that from my environment, I will need to rely less on medication and less on the physician. And they love that concept. But it's very, very difficult for them to take that information and go what we describe as actionable insights and act on the advice the doctor or the healthcare professional has given them. So we invented the asthma and allergy friendly certification mark 
to deal with this issue. And just to give you a very brief medical lesson or back to biology in school, here is our airways and here's your lower airways. And when you have an asthma and allergy attack, three things kind of happen. One is the airway becomes narrowed, it also becomes thickened and there's increase in secretion. So the trigger goes into the airway and it makes it difficult for people to have an allergic reaction, similar to something you might have, ectopic dermatitis, that's happening inside. And these are the culprits in the indoor environment that trigger that allergic reaction. And sometimes it can be chemicals, what we call the cozy culprits, fireplaces, uh, candles, uh, cooking indoors. Um, and what we're saying is let's tackle the culprits, let's remove these from the environment and then we'll need to pour less medicine into people and inhalers because we're actually dealing with the source, not treating symptoms. So it's a really, really simple level lesson, but it's one that we want to empower people to actually understand, to get it, and then now I get it, Doc, I now know what to do because there's a certification program out there that means I can actually um, select certain products. And if I just pop back to this slide from the CDC, uh, they've highlighted climate change, which is, is, is happening. We can all disagree about why it's happening, but it is happening. And you'll see asthma and allergens is actually highlighted twice within the, the US Centers of Disease Control. So again, this is a big issue that there's a lot of science and evidence to back up. But as I said, it's quite difficult for people to act on this advice. So we have a certification program that certifies products in every room in your home. And we look at uh, furnace filters, we look at laundry, we look at textiles, cleaning products. We even actually certify some car cabin filters for Mercedes-Benz. But what's great about the product that's been exhibited in the booth today is it deals with that whole of house solution. It not only filters the air, it balances the air quality. And that's a fantastic value proposition for people who are interested in building the best quality homes with the best indoor air quality. Another very quick story about, about my kids. I started trying to make this a very much real story that actually relates to real people. This isn't just science and tech. This is benefits and outcomes and real stories. So this is my youngest daughter here um, on her bike on, her, on summer holidays. But one night she gave us an incredible fright. She ended up, it was due to a combination of poor air, air qualities, having a fever and ended up with a febrile convul convulsion. And it was ironic because somebody who's involved in indoor air quality in healthy homes for my own daughter to have this issue really brought it back to me, not only as a doctor and as an entrepreneur, but as a parent, that this issue is really important and impacts on people's lives. I'm glad to report she made a, a full recovery thanks to fantastic nurses in the emergency room. And uh, Teresa is her name, this is her at her first day of school. Um, so my challenge to you is, if somebody is building a home, um, who can they trust? If they want to specify product, or if you as an architect or a building professional wants to build the best possible home you can, who do you trust and who out there is going to be able to keep the promise that you're making to your customers? Um, so if you go out and have a quick Google of well, what are allergy friendly products, um, you'll see this. This is from your own US Federal Drug Administration and on their own website they have that the word hypoallergenic has no scientific basis whatsoever. People, this is like telling people that Father Christmas doesn't exist. They kind of say, I thought that meant something. I thought when I buy a hypoallergenic pillow, somebody's tested it. They haven't. There's no, substan no scientific substantiation of that claim whatsoever. Or even worse, if you go out there, this is from a food site, this is a carton of egg, and the allergy advice is it may contain egg or contains egg. So, so, so people are really confused when they go out, go out there and try and act on this. So what we've tried to do is develop a really strong technical scientific certification through allergy standards, who we are, but then make that resonate with the customer by partnering with the National Patient Organization, who are the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. They vet our standards, uh, they peer review them, and they then activate the, the marketing through physician activation strategies, community awareness, Facebook and social media. So we have the right balance between very, very strong technical, but then actually that concept of telling stories and joining this, the dots about outcomes and benefits for real people. So how do you actually certify products? Well, if you think of buildings, buildings uh, are the building envelope. They're actually the material science of how we build them. So we work with paint companies like Benjamin Moore. We work with Owens Corning, as I men mentioned about building materials, uh, floor covering companies. And Train are, are very excited to collaborate with these people to have that whole of house message. They buy into the fact that partnership is leadership. And it's not just one product, it's the magic bullet. It's about offering the value proposition for the entire home. 
But once you've built the home, you then have to clean, clean the air, which obviously your train do. You then have to clean the surfaces. And you also have to look at the incidental furniture or the textiles that you bring in. So we will certify all products in all categories to maintain a healthy home. It's all very well building one, and that's good, it's a good start, but then you have to maintain it and keep that building healthy, and that goes ongoing maintenance of cleaning air and cleaning surfaces. So this is the certification mark, and you'll see it, it's fantastic to see it on, on all the products around here, and that essentially is connecting that 60 million Americans I mentioned with asthma and allergy with a trusted brand that has good science, but also is recognized with educational content by their own patient advocacy group with this, the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. Some of the certification brands in that, in, in that, if you cast your mind back to that picture of the house I had, every room in the house and maintaining and building the house. Um, and this is some great uh, context of Owens Corning. Again, I put this slide in here because I know a lot of people here are building professionals. It's just a concept of cutting through the clutter and the noise, but also combining building the home with then a product like this, which is actually maintaining the health of the home on an ongoing basis. And these big companies partnering with each other. And I know uh, Train have their own partnerships with various, various uh, installation companies as well. So as building professionals, we see a lot of companies may have building code marks like the floor score or indoor advantage gold or or green guard and other marks like that and many of our clients will do both they may have a b2b building code uh, for lead or us green building council like green guard but then they will also have a b2c offering using our certification and our certification is actually also registered on the origin green database so it pushes through to lead and well building standard and the international living in institute so if you're sco scoping our buildings for that, the certification will register on the specifications. Um, <clears throat> Drain have a lot about digital and artificial intelligence and machine learning, but that's very much where um, computer-assisted living about air quality is going. But what's really important is let's not just have AI and machine learning about making things quicker and faster and convenient. Let's make AI and machine learning about air quality and health. And really as a doctor, what I see we're moving away with healthy living is it's not treating disease anymore. In fact, we're moving away from preventing it only and we're moving towards prediction. And that's what the smart and healthy home of the future will be about. So as I, as I, as I finish up here, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. As a building professional, as a maker of products or an architect, are you relevant to the allergy aware consumer? Uh, do, if you are relevant, what's your data? Or are you saying things like hypoallergenic, which aren't substantiated? And then as a building professional or somebody in the network, how are you going to build trust in your community? Who's keeping the promises that you're making to your audience? And my last challenge is, let's not be like the goldfish who can't see the dirty air. Let's be the game changers and be like the blue goldfish and swim the other way uh, and really switch on around the concept of healthy homes and indoor air quality. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, John. So, Matt. Over to you. All right, John.